Human Reproduction Gametogenesis Podcast The primary sex organs the testes in the male and ovaries in the female produce gametes that is sperms and ovum respectively by the process called gametogenesis in testes the immature male germ cells spermatogonia produce sperms by spermatogenesis that begins at puberty the spermatogonia singular called spermatogonium present on the inside wall of seminiferous tubules multiply by mitotic division and increase in numbers each spermatogonium is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes some of these spermatogonia called primary spermatocytes periodically undergo meiosis a primary spermatocyte completes the first meiotic division that is reduction division leading to formation of two equal haploid cells called secondary spermatocytes which have only 23 chromosomes each the secondary spermatocytes undergo the second meiotic division to produce four equal haploid spermatids what would be the number of chromosome in these spermatids these spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa that is sperms by the process called spermiogenesis after spermiogenesis sperm heads become embedded in the sertoli cells and are finally released from the seminiferous tubules by the process called spermiation spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty due to significant increase in the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh This if you recall is a hypothalamic hormone the increased levels of gnrh then acts at the anterior pituitary gland and stimulates secretion of two gonadotropins luteinizing hormone lh and follicle stimulating hormone fsh lh acts at the leading cells and stimulates synthesis and secretion of androgens androgens in turn stimulate the process of spermatogenesis FSH acts on Sertoli cells and stimulates secretion of some factors which help in the process of spermiogenesis. Let us examine the structure of a sperm. It is a microscopic structure composed of a head, neck, a middle piece and a tail. A plasma membrane envelops the whole body of a sperm. The sperm head contains an elongated haploid nucleus. the anterior portion of which is covered by cap like structure acrosome the acrosome is filled with enzymes that help fertilization of the ovum the middle piece possesses numerous mitochondria which produce energy for the movement of tail that facilitate sperm motility essential for fertilization the human male ejaculates about 200 to 300 million sperms during a coitus of which for normal fertility at least 60% sperms must have normal shape and size and at least 40% of them must show vigorous motility sperms released from the seminiferous tubules are transported by the accessory ducts secretions of epididymis vasa deferens seminal vesicle and prostate are essential for maturation and motility of sperms the seminal plasma along with the sperms constitute the semen the function of male sex accessory duct and glands are maintained by the testicular hormones that is androgens the process of formation of a mature female gamete is called oogenesis which is markedly different from spermatogenesis oogenesis is initiated during the embryonic development stage when a couple of million gamete mother cells oogonia are formed within each fetal ovary no more oogonia are formed and added after birth these cells start division and enter into prophase first of the meiotic division and get temporarily arrested at that stage called primary oocytes Each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells and is called primary follicle. A large number of these follicles degenerate during the phase from birth 
to puberty. Therefore, at puberty, only 60,000 to 80,000 primary follicles are left in each ovary. The primary follicles get surrounded by more layers of granulosa cells and a new theca and are called secondary follicles. The secondary follicle soon transforms into a tertiary follicle, which is characterized by a fluid-filled cavity called entrum. The theca layer is organized into an inner theca interna and an outer theca externa. It is important to draw your attention that it is at this stage that the primary oocyte within the tertiary follicle grows in size and completes its first meiotic division. It is an unequal division resulting in the formation of large haploid secondary oocyte and the tiny first polar body. The secondary oocyte retains bulk of the nutrient-rich cytoplasm of the primary oocyte. Can you think of any advantage for this? Does the first polar body born out of first meiotic division divide further or degenerate? At present, we are not very certain about this. The tertiary follicle further changes into the mature follicle or graphene follicle. The secondary oocyte forms a new membrane called zona pellucida. Surrounding it, the graphene follicle now ruptures to release the secondary oocyte that is ovum from the ovary by the process called ovulation. Can you identify major differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis? A diagrammatic representation of spermatogenesis and oogenesis is given in figure 3.8. Thank you.